So, now you know what it feels like carving people up. You don't like it? Please, Frank, you're not trying to kill. Then why? Those two men, your money, not to help, to protect. Not with this, you don't. Look, you against my call if I'm low. I would have been picking your bits off the wall if you had. Hey, that, that don't mean I don't appreciate it. It's a fancy bit of cutlery. It costs much money. I bet it did. Please, Frankie, don't play games, eh? I'm not playing, Demetrius. But I do it for you. Look, you want to help me? You do it the Australian way without the knife. You too think I'm just a bloody wog. Oh, break it down. We're all bloody wogs, Alsatian dogs, no right to be here. Look, Australians don't think that way about you. Newtown is Australia, right? That's one place in Australia. All right, custom in Newtown. So you want to know why I have that knife? I tell you why. Because of packs of Australian kids that want to clean out the walks, get rid of us. Maybe it's because you carry the knife. And what do they carry? Bicycle chains? Iron bars? Look, I'm not saying it's easy. Not even for blacks who was born here. Of course it's not easy. But, but this, this don't make things better. What does? Well, there's ways of getting together, like... Look, we, we talked about me coming around to see your family some night. Is that still on? It's for you to say. What about Wednesday night? <laughs> Wednesday, fine. Mama do kebab, especially for you. Kebab what? <laughs> kebab. It's a Greek dish. Very tasty. Half past six, all right? Sure. Half past six. Hey, what about your job at Tony's Cafe? Oh, I get that night off. Great. You better go now. You're underage and Pat, I don't like it. <laughs> i see you Wednesday. I heard most of that. Wouldn't be you if you didn't. Maybe I'm like Demetrius. Maybe I've got an interest in you too. Then what are we waiting for? Oh, not that kind of interest. Well, you can't blame a bloke for trying. A criminal for a bloke to pass up something that's waiting for him and right under his nose. Well, you're on the wrong bus, mate. There's plenty more in the depot. Can I see that? Do you really think he bought this because of the tough local kids? Could be. There's plenty of them and it's well known the Greeks carry the knife. You know, I think he bought it when he heard McAuliffe and Lowe talking. Talking about what they'd do if you didn't settle your racing debts. How does it open? That's a horrible thing. Put it away. What are you frightened about? You don't think I'd ever use it, do you? About McAuliffe and Lowe, can you pay them? Look, it's only $40. Can you pay them? Why worry about those loud mouths? I'm not going to. I think you should. Sit down, Frankie. I want to tell you something. The first night I came here to look after Uncle Mick, it was when you were in camp. They found someone in a gutter. He was beaten up and unconscious. He spent two weeks in hospital. Well, what's that got to do with me? He was a Welshing bookmaker, Frankie. Like you. Oh, now look, wait a minute. No, you don't see yourself like that, but McAuliffe does. And he's not going to give you many more chances. If you don't settle with him soon, you could be in real trouble. You're going to have to be very lucky on Saturday. Aren't you? That's why Mum come round yesterday. They're telling me these two provos are up there looking for me at home. Well, it was a moral they'd be around sometime, wasn't it? But Barney Lowe saw them too. Saw them up at your place? He told me yesterday when they come round to collect. You settled them up in full, didn't you? Close enough. Close enough's not good enough. Not if they've got that on you. Here. Take what you want. Take it. <laughs> you helped me out once, Pat, but once is enough. Put it away before you lose it. Do it on your own, then. I'm going to. 
Excuse me, what? <laughs> Sorry, man. Hey, you're right. He's not that bad. Mike, you missed the army, did I? Oh, by the day. <laughs> you didn't let on to anyone, did you? Eh? Hey? About me being AWL. What do you think I am? If a bloke takes me into his confidence, I keep it on myself. <laughs> all right, Pat, all right, don't get hurt. I was just asking. I want your morning cup of tea, Uncle Mick. Hey. Well, if you don't want it. Oh, yeah, yeah, Peg, thanks. I could do with a cup of tea right now. She don't look after me like that. No special little attentions, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. See, she reads my mind. Like a book. Good job the sister don't get hold of it or be banned. Now cut it out, Frankie. She's the wife's niece. Oh, it's all right, Uncle Mick. It's just talk. It's a... Put your face in your beer. Frankie! Too fast, Private. Come on. All right, come on. Well, they weren't causing any trouble. God's sake, Pat out. It's all right, it's army business, mate. That was real clever, calling them back. I just thought I could help those young blokes. Okay, okay. Got a feeling I want to get out of here somewhere. Well, I'm not surprised. Something else you wanted, Peg? Hmm? Oh, no, no, nothing. Hello. Mara? Is that you? That's Frankie. Well, hello. I didn't know if you'd be home. So have I. So, we've both got the day off. Oh, how about that? So? So.
beautiful day. It still is. Don't you remember the number? Yes, I remember it. Well, I hope that's the end of it for tonight. You don't think he's sitting at home, do you? <laughs> Not the Frankie McCoy I know. What do you know about him? Oh, Margie, baby, come on. What's that supposed to mean? He's a man, isn't he? So? You gave him the push. You think he's sitting home? You think he's going to ring you? Grow up. You don't know Frankie at all. Hello? Is Bill there? I'm sorry, you've got the wrong number. Was it a wrong number? Yes. He might be ringing. He won't have the time. Look, you're not going around there. That sound beginning to grow up. My third cup. So? At this time of night? I'll never sleep. Live dangerously. <laughs> I'm glad I met you, Peg. Let's say the coffee's a bit of a compensation for Frankie not being here. You needed a lot of courage coming around here tonight. It's not the coffee, it's the talk we had. It does you good to get things off your chest. And it's sometimes easier to talk to a stranger. Well, here's to insomnia. Talking of sleep, does Frankie? Sleep? Oh, that's something I wouldn't know about. I don't. Sleep, I mean, not properly anyway. Since Sunday afternoon, hardly at all. Look, those things he said to you on Sunday, you know, what you told me. He's been going through hell ever since he said them. Think he has? I know he has. Oh, I shouldn't have to tell you. You know him better than I do. They're all the things he wants for both of you. They seem so twisted because he's... I know. Because of what we are. The way we are. Because it all seems so far off. Oh, he's a proud, independent idiot. If only we could get it through to him that the whole world's not against him. Give him that chance, Margie. It's not only him. It's me, too. Neither of us can stand it not going on this way. Can I tell him to ring you tomorrow? That you won't hang up? All right. I promise. Good. I'll get your coat. G'day. Gee, have I just had a great day. I don't think I've had such a ball with a real chick since I don't know when. What's up? Skeet. What's the matter? Get a mirror and find out. Hey, Skeet. Mirror? You could have at least wiped the lipstick off. Think you're playing it. Stupid looking bastard. this afternoon. Much as I'll ever have them. Well, you haven't finished your lunch. <laughs> Send the rest of the starving millions in India. The time I was in the bar to start taking bets. Can you pay the freight? What freight? To India. Out of this? Is that all you've got to bet with? It's all I got, period. I have to win on the first or I'll have had it. Frankie. Good luck. 
Thanks. The day I'll need it. Looks like she's going all right. Good on you, mate. Hey, Frankie. Good on you, Aaron. And that 40 you owe Barney and me, we'll have it on Bright Ember. All of it? All of it, yeah. What's wrong with that? Well, and they're ready to jump. 40's a lot to lay out. It's on, isn't it? Yeah, it's on. You see? I'll give you a chance. Can you hold that much? I want to lay some of it off. Are you going all right? Call it just had 40 on right in. Last lot of prices, big money had come from. It's the P. He's got to lay it off. Don't jump. Frank, you take any of it, George. Jump. Now, two lengths further away is Blue Lock, followed by Great Heart on the inside. They're followed by Young Gary. Berman moving up on the outside of him. Young Joseph has got a check and dropped out there, followed by Borderline. He can't always back win, is he? He's got to lose sometimes. Right in, was it? Yeah. But don't get up on square with him and Barney. But around the turn, and Blue Lock has gone to the front now for maintenance. Swift Peter on the outside of him, and he's right in, but coming into the... Oh, God, it could break a leg. Right in, but shortly afterwards, moved up on the outside of Blue Lock and gone to the front. And Bright Ember is shot well clear from Brulock, finishing well, but all too late. Maintenance hanging on well, then Swift Peter. But Bright Ember has a shot to pieces, and Bright Ember goes on to win by four lengths from Brulock's second. Uh, maintenance was uh, about two lengths away, Young Gary. Fill him up, will you, Pink? Three to one, wasn't it? Yeah, three. Well, the price didn't change. That's $160 you owe Barney and me. You're pretty good at arithmetic. Who needs computer? Don't you ever back loose? Not often. I've got an ear for the right information. The way it's right? Bring it back if it's not there. I, uh, I won't ask you for it now. I wouldn't want to embarrass you. But Monday afternoon, we want it in full, right? What are you going to do? I'm singing on street corners. What do you think? Mm, cheers, mate. Cheers. Might as well be a million. Frankie, you're not happy. No, oh, forget it, mate. It's not your worry. We all liked you coming to our house on Wednesday night. Yeah, it was a good night. Mama and Papa and Andania. Great people. Hey, Chuck. Look who's here. Looks like Rat McCoy. Hey, remember the last time we featured with him? <laughs> pow, pow! Hey, you got me. Rat's <laughs> flattening his back and his birds making noises. Don't touch him. Don't hurt him. Don't hurt the brave oh, rat. The, the. You might want something? Hey, this can't be the rat. Oh, the rat in a tune spew eats. Good the rat does. Big rich gambling man. Well, maybe he ain't doing so good. What are you two doing out of glebe? Tonight we're slumming. Yeah, so is the rat eating their joint like this. Don't go with the big gambler. Well, maybe he ain't so big as they say. Hmm. Wait a minute. Do you want to prove it? How's that, Rick? You talk big, but talk's as far as you go. Especially since you can't hide behind Howlett. We'll match you gambling any time, Rat. How about tonight? That vacant lot beside the rose at 8.30, okay? Tonight? Y you mean two up? What else? Okay, we'll be there. I don't play for pennies, you know. Neither do we. Great. So we got a game. Let's go, Dan. Hey, hold it. Just so that there's no bad feelings, how about showing us your role? Stopped you, don't it? You're all blather, you two dingoes. Look, we'll match you, McCoy. We'll get a roll, and tonight. So good. Hey, Chuck. Shut up. The row's 8.30. Make sure you're loaded. Frankie, why do you want to gamble with them? When you're in trouble, you go for the whip. You do the best you can. You don't know how it's going to work out, but you've got to try. 
If they have no money now, where will I get it? I don't think they can. That's up to them, isn't it? You really gonna do it now? Danny, mate, we're both gonna do it. We take this risk just to big night ourselves with McCoy. We're talking like we never done this before. We hurry with us, then? Yeah, that's another thing. McCoy talking about us hiding behind Howlett. Yeah, well, so we gets it, so maybe we lose it. So we never had it. You gonna let McCoy get away with calling us dingoes? Well, where do we do it? Oh, Some place that's closed the weekend. Open only on Saturday mornings. You know, the bread left in the safe just asked to be taken. Like before, we case it from the back and then we make the bust. You're not pale. She's apples, Chop. Pale. <laughs> hey, Demetrius. How's this for a roll? That is all the money you have? For that, I've got to win a bundle. What if they had asked you to shout? <laughs> They're not that smart. I get off from here at 8 o'clock. I come with you. You? Sure. Why not? Old Hardman, the butcher, and he's going home. Come on!